Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas, a wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at (laughs) OzarkFolkCenter.com. Howdy, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. This week, we're going on a musical field trip as we celebrate Ozark traditional music pioneers and their influences. This special episode features Betsy Ellis and Clark Wyatt, the Creek Rocks, and the Aching Hearts recorded live at the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. Down in the vault, Mark Jones dusts off an archival recording of Ozark Originals' The Apple Family, and author, folklorist, and songwriter Charlie Sandage presents the Off the Beaten Path studio tour of the Ozarks. All that this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. Years ago, we were visited by a fine old-time string band from Kansas City, the Wilders. Fronting that band was a fine young fiddler named Betsy Ellis. Betsy is now touring with her friend, banjoist Clark Wyatt. They recently did a show here with a band from Springfield, Missouri called the Creek Rocks. In this first set, we'll hear Betsy and Clark on the first two songs. Then they'll be joined by their friends, Mark Ballou and Cindy Wolfe. too much in a night of Ozark Heroes without mentioning and, and saying saying howdy down the road to the great Violet Hensley. Um, this is a tune that Violet learned from her dad, uh, George Washington Brumley, when she was a kid, and uh, he played this tune called Jericho, and she learned it from him, and then if you know anything about Violet, she likes to do things her way, whittling and fiddling her way. And uh, so she has her way of bowing it, and we've got it together like a conversation with the two of them. So it's Jericho, two ways. We'll see who gets the last word.
uh, I spent a lot of time trying to learn that tune from a recording. I've been going to visit Violet for about 15 years now and consider her such a dear friend and mentor and, of course, a hero. And uh, I'd, I'd played it with her or tried to in person, and she would get rolling on it, and I would get lost and fall behind, and I didn't know what to do. So I thought, I'll go home. She recorded it. It's on a great collection, by the way, called uh, Traditional Fiddle Music of the Ozarks. And uh, I came back to visit her the next time. I said, Violet, I learned Jericho. She said, all right, let's hear it. And I played it for her, and she looked at me. She says, well, that's not how I do it. <laughs> but, but he recorded it on that Gordon McCann. She said, oh, they wanted me to play it like my dad played it. But this is how I play it. So now you learn it this way, too. So uh, I thought that was good. She had to put me straight. Uh, down in the south, uh, a song called Dixie Darling is one that's been popular around many places for a long time. My Dixie Darling, listen to the song I sing beneath the silver moon. With my banjo right in tune My heart is ever true I love no one but you My Dixie darling My Dixie queen Southern winds are blowing, that's where the daisies grow in. The girls of the north in their gate finery, whirling around in the soul side, singing song of Dixie Darling, where I long to be. My Dixie Darling, listen to the song I sing beneath the silver moon with my banjo riding tune. My heart is ever true, I love no one but you. My Dixie darling, my Dixie queen. Well, we're gonna, um, we've been doing a lot of uh, songs from the folk song collections, specifically John Quincy Wolf's collection out of Lyon College in Batesville, Arkansas, and the Max Hunter collection out of Springfield, Missouri. So we put them due together and made an album called Wolf Hunter. And, uh, but we're gonna deviate from that for a second and, well, we're gonna play a song we learned on Hee Haw. Yeah, I, I couldn't resist uh, playing this song at the Ozark Folk Center. This is called the Ozark Mountain Lullaby. Yep. In the cradle deep, the baby sleeps by the warm, soft firelight. Mama singing, Daddy's humming. The Ozark Mountain Lullaby. Um 
Mama's fixing up some supper. Daddy's working up a sweat. Cause any time the creek might rise, the crops ain't all in yet. Sisters got her chores to do. And Lord knows I've got mine. We rest our heads when the day is ended to the Ozark Mountain lullaby. La la la. Ozark Mountain Lullaby Lord smiles on our country hall Where love and peace abide And while we children grow We learn to know That love is the tie that binds And someday when we're on our own With the family by and by We'll be singing to our children Ozark Mountain Lullaby La 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 lu 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 la Mama singing Daddy's humming The Ozark Mountain Lullaby La 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 Thank you. The Mofa, I mean, uh, uh, what is it, Grandma? Hey, let's do a song about a critter. Let's do some animal stuff, yeah. All right. Here's a hunting song. This song about a fellow who goes out hunting with his dog, but he gets in a little bit of trouble, so his wife has to come rescue them. <laughs> but they're going after groundhogs, this song. We learned it from Jimmy Driftwood, and it's called Groundhog. Yeah. <laughs> my gun, call out my dog, Groundhog. Shoulder of my gun, call out my dog, Groundhog. Shoulder of my gun, call out my dog, going to the mountain, gonna haunt a Groundhog, Groundhog. Oh, don't you do it. Up on the bluff, groundhog. Oh, don't 
come here, Sal. I'm all out of breath, Groundhog. was old-time music duo Betsy Ellis and Clark Wyatt, starting that set off with Rattler Tree to Possum and Jericho, then joined by the Creek Rocks for Dixie Darlin, Ozark Mountain Lullaby, and Groundhog. When we come back after this break, it'll be time for my weekly trip down to the vault for a visit with my pal Mark Jones. This is Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. This is that time of the week when I like to go down and and visit with my friend Mark Jones. Mark takes care of uh, the hundreds and hundreds of recordings that we've made over the years here at the Ozark Folk Center. We've had shows here since 1973, and we recorded just about every one of them. And Mark's in charge of keeping track of all that stuff. Let's see what he's got for us this week. Hi, Mark. Hello there, Dave. Come on in. Well, so you got it nice down here. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I, you swept the floor. I have. Well. I, I, I got one of them new brooms. It just <laughs> sweeps everything. <laughs> we need to get you one of those Roombas down here. Then you won't have to worry about it I, anymore. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. That'd be neat. Well, did you find a good tune for us this week? I did. You know how many all the families that play would get together play music and that was kind of their form of entertainment and uh there's so many even today that are still doing that it's an ozark tradition isn't it it is music's just carried down from father to son and mother to daughter and it's it's a great thing this family uh the apple family was around here for quite a while. And still around. That'd be Brad and Brandon Apple, their dad Larry, uh, their mom played bass. Yeah. Uh, boy, they, they've they been at it a long time. They live over in Batesville, not far from here. And uh, Brad and Brandon are still playing. We still get them over here every now and again, don't we? We do. We do. And I'm proud when they do come over. Yeah. And uh, it's an old tune called Who's Gonna Dance with Sally Ann? <laughs> Sally Ann. Let's hear it. 
Thank you very much. An old fiddle tune called Who's Gonna Dance with Sally Ann. Let her go, son. Brandon now he could play couldn't he good fiddle yeah player. so when was this recorded this was in 1992 yeah, let's see that would have made Brandon 11 years old at that time and Brad his brother maybe just a little bit a little older. bit older but they're great musicians and we're awful lucky to have them. we are Brandon won just about every fiddle contest anywhere within hundreds of miles of here so many that now he's a judge of fiddle contests that's right and still at it today that's right well that was a great tune thank you Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Dave. The Aching Hearts is a new collaboration between two of St. Louis, Missouri's leading figures in folk and roots music, Kelly Wells and Ryan Spearman. The husband and wife duo features a mix of guitar, banjo, fiddle, mandolin, washboard, and old-time vocal harmonies. Here are four songs from The Aching Hearts. It's raining, raining, raining here this morning. 
Absolutely. Um, we ca we kind of consider it to be the top of the Ozarks, or at least maybe we want to, just to have that connection. Yeah, it's kind of the tip of Ozarkia, right? What we like to call um, it. I think that with the the river right there, the Mississippi River, does create this rich heritage heritage of music. And there's a big folk scene in St. Louis, which before we moved there, I would not have known. But there are a lot of folks playing old time music, both casually, together in jams, or you know, professionally as well. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you can feel the musical and cultural influence of the Ozarks in St. Louis and, and you can experience it if you drive out of St. Louis and you're heading south, you'll, it do, only takes a few minutes and you're in the foothills mm -hmm. and uh, you can, you can, the shift happens pretty quickly. There's definitely an exchange there. <laughs> The folk school is connected to KDHX. It's the only community radio station that we know of in the country that has a folk school attached to it uh, in the style that we do. So that makes it exciting. And of course, we have a lot of folk and roots programming on KDHX. So it was a really nice connection uh, when the two organizations merged back in 2012. They both have a similar mission. The folk school's mission has always been uh, to build community through music. And uh, KDHX's mission is pretty much the same, to build community through media and music. So um, they made kind of this natural connection and so uh, we have we offer group classes mostly for adults a few for children here and there but the goal of the school is really to be able to meet people on any level uh, that they are with their music whether they are brand new whether they are intermediate whether they're skilled and they want to learn how to play on stage whether they just want it to be a hobby whatever it may be so we've um, the school's grown over the years we've got a really diverse student base these days and we've um, we've done a lot with diversifying our programs too to to meet more of a contemporary um, interest. And that doesn't mean that we are ignoring the tradition. The beautiful part is getting people in through something that maybe they connect with or understand. Maybe it's contemporary music um, that they would have heard more in the mainstream. And then we can teach them, this is where this music originated and this is the roots and tradition of it. So.
years. We don't know how long we've been married, but we know it's longer than six years. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. Um, Ryan's been a professional musician for many years longer than that. Um, mm. And I'm newer to the scene. I've done a lot of different things in the music industry, but um, started playing music probably about 10 years ago. Um, and then, uh, again, I learned a little bit when I was younger. Played piano and a little bit of guitar. Yeah. Um, picked it back up about 10 years ago. And then we've probably been playing together for about six, maybe five as the aching yeah. hearts. It's yeah. hard to pinpoint the beginning. Yeah. It's kind of a blur. <laughs> it's been fun though, you know. It's um, it's fun for us. I think we like to we like that we're married and we can practice at home and we can write songs together, and that's been really fulfilling. And it also um, it's fun for us to sing. We love to sing heartbreak songs. That's why we have the name that we do. Mm. We're both drawn to um, the 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 darker side of country and folk music, I guess. And so it's been yeah. fun for us to do that as as a I think any. Probably any folky duo is doing that these days, but we especially yeah. like to do it. So. St. Louis-based Kelly Wells and Ryan Spearman, The Aching Hearts, playing It's Raining Here This Morning, You Ask Me To, the old classic Down in the Willow Garden, and Cindy, I'll Marry You Someday. After this break, Charlie Sandage will fill us in on a big event that happens here every September, so stay tuned. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio.
Within 30 miles of Mountain View, Arkansas, the home of the Ozark Folk Center State Park, are city streets and multi-lane stretches of highway. More numerous are paved state roads that weave their way along ridges and valleys throughout Stone and surrounding counties. Then come the more interesting choices. Substantial gravel roads that connect crossroads communities, smaller lanes that seem to invite passers-by to explore an isolated hillside or plunge into a hollow, and truth be told, a number of challenging-looking, well, pick trails. And for going on 17 years, it's been possible during one weekend in September each year for anyone who loves the work of creative artisans to pick up a map and follow it to the home studios of around 30 members of an extraordinary pool of such people who live along that network of byways. Becky Dahlstad has been part of the area's annual Off the Beaten Path studio tour since its inception. The Off the Beaten Path studio tour, uh, which is now in its 17th year, is a free self-guided driving tour uh, of artist working studios, uh, which are located within 30 miles of the Courthouse Square in Mountain View. So uh, that, has, that has been our standard since we started the tour. And we only have uh, working studios so that when uh, visitors go to the studio, they meet the artists where they work, where they, they make their crafts or uh, paintings, photography. We have a wide range of art and crafts. And uh, so they get a real sense of, of how everything is done. Plus, they get a glimpse of the personal life of the artist because a lot of these studios are adjacent to people's houses so they meet our cats and dogs and it's a, it's a real personal visit um, and it, it gives people a, a good sense of what is involved in all these crafts. The range of arts and crafts represented on the tour is as diverse as the area's terrain. At one stop may be delicate jewelry or oil and canvas paintings. At another, maybe functional furniture or customized hunting knives. When we first started the tour, we had 12 artists, um, and that was, of course, the fewest that we've had on the tour, but we wanted to get it started, and we didn't really know what was going to happen, so we have always had fine arts and crafts, and we, we, dis we describe them as fine and functional art, or another way to describe it is art and craft artisans. We have 2D, we have 3D, we have painters, we have photographers, we have um, bead makers, we have woodworkers, potters, of course. And we always try to add at least, we, we're now up to where we have close to 30 studios in, a, in any given year. Uh, it will vary by, some people might want to take a year off, but we always try to seek out at least one or two new artists, just so that the visitors who do come back year after year after year have something new to see. Buying and selling of art and craft objects is, of course, part of the point of the tour. But what draws someone to visit the workplaces of these artisans goes beyond the piece that the visitor might carry away with them when they leave. It has something to do with the encounter, the experience of seeing and hearing the artisan doing creative work. Becky Dahlstedt. Well, clearly the um, artist who uh, is making handcrafts or painting or whatever is telling a story um, which involves their life and so one of the things that we feel has been so successful about the studio tour is it allows the visitor a, a very personal knowledge of the artist. And what we're selling as much as, well, I make pottery, and what I'm selling as much as a mug, which you could go to Walmart and buy cheaper, um, is my input, is my perspective, is my talent, and the way I, what, what, is, what is involved in my making of that mug and what the process is. And by seeing that process and seeing me either doing it or talking about it or showing them where I do what I do uh, is just a, a very close look at. So they're, they're not just buying the mug, they're buying a piece of my story about the mug and how it's created. And that's a very important thing when you, when you talk about crafts. 
considerable craft, even art, has gone into shaping the tour itself. It's the product of a combination of close understanding of the interests of potential visitors and of the presentational skills of the artisans and of the geography and topography of the area, along with persistent dedication to getting something right and getting it better with each repetition. The studio tour takes place the third weekend in September every year, and we, um, we have a website which is www.offthebeatenpathstudiotour.com. All spelled out, all run together. And then we also have a Facebook page, Off the Beaten Path Studio Tour. And that's the best place to get information as to what's coming up, uh, who are the artists that are going to be on the tour, uh, and just general information about the tour. Uh, we, we produce a book each year that um, lists all the artists on the tour, tour. It uh, tells a little bit about them, has a picture of their work, tells you kind of what you're going to see at their studio, and then has written directions to their house. We also have a map in the book that is the map of the whole tour, and that shows you more uh, driving directions and detailed directions. So once we develop the book, uh, we usually print it pretty Oh, pretty early, like it's usually available in July or August. And we place it in um, Chamber of Commerce, in the surrounding areas. Uh, it's available at the, the, cra the Arkansas Craft Gallery, the Arkansas Craft School, because we work closely with all the crafts organizations in the area. It's available at the Folk Center, because that's where our, our artists come from. Um, and so you can get, you can pick up the book locally, you can look it up online or on Facebook, and then if you don't, if you, you don't live in this area, when you come into the area for the studio tour, you can stop at any of those locations and pick up your copy of the book. And basically, the tour is the book, because that's what tells you who the artists are, where they live, how to get there, what to expect, all that kind of thing. It all began, this effort to honor and interpret traditional Ozark life with a crafts fair in the early 1960s. Traditional music was added, the folk center itself emerged, and the area became known as a place where anyone can go and not so much step back in time, but somehow get in touch with the values of self-reliance and creativity that were the hallmarks of the way of life we celebrate here. That celebration is nowhere more fully realized than along the trail of the Off the Beaten Path studio tour. Wolf Hunter is the debut CD by the Creek Rocks from Springfield, Missouri. The title is an amalgam of the names of the two folklorists whose collections provided the raw materials for the songs of the album, John Quincy Wolf of Batesville, Arkansas, and Max Hunter of Springfield, Missouri. Let's close out this week's show with some more good stuff from the Creek Rocks.
He sure was a son of a gun. Thank you all so much. We have a couple more in this uh, celebration. And I uh, want to say a great big warm thanks to the Ozark Folk Center for hosting this and the workshop today and the concert tonight. And for you all for joining us. What a nice, nice thing to have this time together. There's so many heroes. We celebrate them every day in every way that we certainly can. And uh, um, we'll bring things back around with a song that we also sang today at the workshop. So if y'all were there and you're here and you're going to encourage your neighbors around you to sing. And then uh, after that, we're going to do uh, one more uh, square dance number. And uh, that would be lovely if we see some dancers on that. You're welcome to come right up those stairs. There's handrails and everything. And carefully come on up, but just join us for, for a finale if you'd like. We'd love that. And then we'll be back in the back, and uh, we'd sure love to visit with you after the concert. And uh, uh, we're going to do this song from Violet Hensley. She started singing this when she was a little girl in church. And um, it's called Fill My Way With Love. And I'll, I'll walk you through the words to the chorus, because that's where we'd love for you to sing. And you got the first line and the last line already learned, because you heard me say it. Fill my way every day with love, love, love. As I walk with the heavenly dove, let me go all the while with a song and a smile. Fill my way every day with love. Let's play it through and then sing it and enjoy it all. Yeah. from way back in the back of the back. <laughs> it's called Seneca Square Dance, and this, this gentleman called Fiddlin' Sam Long, 
uh, he, he recorded this tune, and I was telling Mark, there's a, he had a really kind of cool story. He played in a multi-day fiddle contest in Springfield, Missouri. So they'd have playoffs on things like Best Arkansas Traveler and probably, you know, however many waltzes you could play in, in all these different categories and many days of competition. He came the winner, and, and part of the prize package was a recording session. So thanks to him sticking to it, we have some great recordings from S Fiddle and Sam Long. And this Seneca Square Dance is one that I really love. And if you go back and listen to the old recording and you hear their chord progression, we were talking about it today in the, in the workshop, it's pretty magical. It sounds real neat, and it's a little surprising, and, and it's, a, it's a good thing they got a chance to record it. We thank you all again. We invite you to dance, even if it's in your seat, but if you want to get up and dance, we'd love to see you, and we say thank you so much. All right. You've been listening to Springfield, Missouri band The Creek Rocks, Mark Ballou and Cindy Wolf, with some help from Betsy Ellis and Clark Wyatt. We faded in with Wild Bill Jones, followed by the song Fill My Way With Love, and closed with a hot fiddle tune, Seneca Square Dance. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week with music you won't hear further up the radio dial. For Ozark Highlands Radio, I'm Dave Smith. See you next week. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from the Committee of 100, proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. Arkansas State Parks, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at ArkansasStateParks.com. And by Stone Bank, with deep roots in Mountain View and a deep respect for those who preserve our heritage. More information about what it means to bank Boulder is at StoneBank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.